Hey, it's Doc Langley with the hot new thing when it comes to breastfeeding medicine. So this has been out for a little while, but I'm still kind of wrapping my mind around it. So the idea is that we've been treating mastitis all wrong in the breastfeeding community. Um, the idea that we've kind of been treating it as a muscle. So we've usually when you have mastitis, so that's usually um, some redness to the skin of the breast with a full feeling. You can't get all the milk out. It starts to get hard. Milk builds up. And you even get to the point where you start getting uh, fevers, feeling just awful, tired, sick, achy, that kind of the myalgias is what it's called in the medical community with the body aching. My back always aches with that kind of thing. Um, and so that's a, a sign of an infection that needs to be treated with antibiotics. So that's been the traditional way of viewing it, and the way that I've always been taught to treat it is hot compresses, a lot of massage, trying to get that milk out, however it takes. So really pain, working through the pain to feed on that side, to pump on that side, to get that milk out because it needs to get moving. And then if you get to the point where you're having fevers and those myalgias, that's when you need to start the antibiotics. So that's kind of how you treat a muscle if you think about um, if you've ever had sore muscles or uh, a muscle strain or sprain or tear. You do a lot of heat and massage and try to work through it. And that's not what the breast is. As a lot of these articles have pointed out, the breast is more like a gland. And when at least doctors think about glands, I mean, one of the classic ones is the pancreas. And the number one thing that you hear in medical school is never teach the pancreas. At least number one thing that you hear about pancreas. Don't touch the pancreas, ever. It's, it's a gland. It has all sorts of chemicals in it that digest things. So if you touch it and it starts digesting the wrong place because you mushed it around in the wrong way, that's big problems. You don't want things to be digested outside of the gastrointestinal system, outside of your stomach. <laughs> you want the rest of your tissues and muscles and the rest of your body to not be digested. You're not trying to eat yourself. So the idea is that the breast is more like a gland. Makes sense. The, the breast makes not enzymes like the pancreas does, but it makes milk. Uh, and there is the, just the structure of the breast is so much different than a muscle. I mean, a muscle is tough tissue that all works together to contract and expand and move your bones around. But the breast, I mean, the breast is made of these lobules that make milk that are all throughout the breast, and they're connected by little ducts that are running and connecting and all pouring into a bigger area where it can go out the nipple to feed baby or go into a pump or whatever. So that's making up the whole breast is these lobules and ducts. So the concern is if there's any inflammation going on in these lobules, the first thing it's going to do is narrow those ducts, which is going to make there be a buildup of milk, which is only going to make everything worse. It's going to cause more swelling, and that's going to block off more ducts that are supposed to be getting the milk out, which is going to cause more milk to build up and more swelling to be there. So just because you physically force milk out of the breast by forcing uh, the massage or forcing pumping or forcing feeding more than you should, kind of above and beyond what you normally would, that's going to cause more little damages to the breast and more swelling, more inflammation, more difficulty of the milk coming out. And so you're more likely to regress to full-blown bacterial mastitis and need antibiotics. So what if we, instead of focusing on trying to mash the milk out, what if we take a more gentle approach? Maybe we won't need to resort to antibiotics as much. So that's why uh, the Physician's Guide to Breastfeeding that I've been reading a lot um, has this little acronym of BAIT to be a more gentle way of decreasing the inflammation but also resolving this mastitis. So breast rest. That doesn't mean not feeding, but it means cutting your breast to the slack, not doing the hardcore massage, no overfeeding or over pumping, just what you would normally do. Enough to keep your baby fed, keep you comfortable the amount that you normally would, but not mashing on your breasts, really trying to get all that milk out. No. 
Uh, and then Advil and Tylenol or acetaminophen and ibuprofen and potent anti-inflammatories that work on different pathways in your body to do everything we can to decrease the swelling in these everywhere, in the ducts and the glands. And then ice instead of heat, which is pretty wild to me. It's always been heat, heat, heat. Um, but ice is better. I mean, heat is good for attracting immune cells and allowing the immune system to fight things off. But the idea is, is that this early mastitis really isn't because of bacteria yet. If we let it sit for long enough, all swollen and unha unhappy, whatever bacteria happens to be there will take over because there's no immune system getting in there and fighting it off. But if we get it early enough, it's not a bacterial process yet. It's just inflammation. Maybe it's from having uh, your uh, bra a little bit too tight on one side and so it's kind of pressing into your breast and not allowing part of it to drain properly. Maybe it's from skipping a feeding or a pumping session that you normally would. Uh, just common things that cause the breast to get a little bit over full and then the more over full it gets, it, the more it blocks off these ducts and so you can get that early feeling of mastitis, of like a plugged, plugged duct kind of feeling. So addressing that plugged duct with this kind of treatment strategy might help us to avoid antibiotics more often because we can re resolve the inflammation without it getting to a bacterial process. So cool thoughts. Um, I'm excited to start treating patients like this and see how they do. Uh, I mean, especially because I am a doctor and I can put them on antibiotics if we need to go there. I mean, the truth is that a lot of antibiotics, especially like the classic Z-Pak, azithromycin, have a lot of anti-inflammatory effects, like not even just that they kill bacteria, but also they decrease inflammation like ibuprofen and Tylenol. So often I have patients that I wonder, man, were they really maxing out how much Tylenol and ibuprofen they could have been taking before I put them on this antibiotic? Because that might have solved the problem in the first place and not had to go on the antibiotic in addition. I'm still trying to figure this out. I'm going to link to my favorite articles um, and videos down in the comment section in case you want to delve into this some more too. It's a cool thing. Mostly, I'm really excited that this means that people are still researching and thinking about breastfeeding topics and trying to get better at it, which is always encouraging to me because I feel like a lot of times breastfeeding just gets shoved in a corner and no one cares about it anymore. Um, I just like doctors that are supportive of breastfeeding and researchers that are excited about it. Um, I've got other breastfeeding topics I talk about up here. Maybe check out that video and be sure to subscribe to our video so I can tell you about that next hot new thing that I hear about when I hear about it. Thanks for watching.